Rebecca Lee joins yeah. us, Altium Portfolio Manager and Market Strategist. Paul Dietrich with us as well today, Fairfax Global CEO and Chief Investment Officer. Um, Mike, you can take this first. We bounced today, which you could say, oh, we're due for a bounce, but not on good news, on bad news. A rough economic report this morning. As Jerry says, now we're counting on the Fed. What do you make of this environment? You know, I, I think this is an overreaction to a lot of these surveys that came out. I will tell you that uh, this is survey data, not hard data. And last year and in 2017, a lot of the survey data was up in the 60s. In fact, new orders in the, a part of the, uh, as part of the ISM was at the highest level since the 1970s. So where was the euphoria then? So why is everyone apocalyptic now? Personal consumption uh, at the moment is up at an 8.7% annualized mm -hmm. rate for 2019. That's the highest level in a decade. So look, I, I think we're still humming along, but manufacturing looks to have hit a speed bump. All right, so your point and Michael's point, and it'd be interesting, Paul, to see whether you agree with this is that it's not so much that things are, are horrible and the Fed's going to bail us out. That, you know what? Things might not be as bad as we thought. How do you see it? Well, I think uh, there's no question that the economy is slowing, but you got to put it in perspective. Investors have to do that. I mean, we had 3% growth last year. We're going to have 2.2%, 2.3% growth this year. That's a significant drop. But if you remember the last four years of the Obama administration, we averaged 2.2% growth. We had a bull market during that time. 2.2% growth is real growth. I think we'll slow down even more next year, and we'll probably see a recession in 2021. Mm. All right, the September jobs report is due out tomorrow morning following a tough week for the markets. So what can we expect from the report? Michael, what do you think? You know, I don't think we're going to have a blowout jobs number in either direction tomorrow. I think we're going to get an okay number somewhere between, uh, you know, 120, 130,000 jobs. And part of the reason for that is there's just not a lot of people left in the workforce. Right. You know, at, at the moment, there's like 1.2 million more jobs available than people looking for work. And if you look at the weekly jobless claims, uh, we're at the lowest level since the late 1960s on an absolute basis, even though the size of the labor force has doubled. So I, I just, I don't think there's much more to add. Yeah. What I'm looking really closely at is manufacturing jobs. Are we adding? Are we declining? And how does wage growth look? Yeah, I was going to say, Paul, I mean, what are you going to drill down on in that report? I, I would think it would be wage growth. I, I agree with Michael, and you're absolutely right. That's what we have to look for. If, we, if we're getting over, I believe, 2.7% wage growth, that means that employment growth is, is going down is because they just simply cannot find the laborers. But if wages are going up, that, that means that's a good sign mm -hmm. uh, in that it means that people are having to pay more for the few workers who are still qualified uh, to do uh, the business. If it's if it's less than 2.7, it means we're really seeing slowing uh, employment growth. But I I think uh, we're going to see uh, decent wage growth, and I think that's a good sign for the economy, even if we don't quite hit analyst projections. All right, we'll watch for all that tomorrow. Michael and Paul are back with us. So to me, that was one of the biggest stories of the whole entire day. This is what businesses have been saying they need to do, but they need the red tape out of the way that they have to get out there and train the workers that they need. They have all these open jobs. Ivanka Trump has been working on this behind the scenes, trying to connect businesses and communities to get these things up and running. Um, Michael, what's your tech? I mean, what's your take? Is this the, the blueprint for companies going forward? Yeah, you know, uh, Ivanka Trump has been really active in all sorts of job training. And, you know, just as an aside, uh, going to the military and letting, letting those certifications for blue-collar jobs go across, getting inmates that are about to be released from prison, job training so they can enter the construction and the labor workforce. And this is another example. However, for Google, $10 million is like couch change to the rest of us. Yeah. And, and Google, Google has 90% of search. You know, they're, they're in big danger of being broken up. I think they need to add a few more zeros to that program if they really want us to take them seriously. Well, I, I mean, Paul, I don't think they'd mind doing that because it's not charity. They don't yeah. have enough workers to fill the jobs they need. All of these companies are in the same position. They need people with the right skills. And I love the idea that they're saying you don't need a college degree. You can just come and go through this program and be ready to work. That cuts down on the debt problem, too.
Yeah, th this is the future of work. They've already trained it over 3 million work. people in digital services. And a former Secretary of Labor just said a few weeks ago that the top 10 in-demand jobs in the United States did not exist 10 years ago. And, and I should make one other point. This particular program with the $10 billion or $10 million is for um, minorities. They've actually Google has actually pledged over $1 billion uh, for this overall program, and this is just a small part of it, so I just wanted to give them credit for that. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, thank you. Paul, Michael, Thanks. appreciate it.